Spoiler alert, I'm going to be reviewing The Last of Us 2, and I may give away some of the things that happen in this irritating social justice warrior piece of garbage. So let me talk about this video game, The Last of Us Part 2. Uh, you know, this is making a, there's a big fuss over this because of the sexuality in it and the social justice garbage that is piped into this very, very popular franchise. The first game, which I played, The Last of Us, uh, was just, people love this. Whenever I talk about the fact that I'm a gamer, people write in and say, you've got to play The Last of Us. Well, I did. I played it almost to the end, and I got tired of it after a while because people say what a great story it is. And it's a good story about a guy who's lost his daughter. It's a uh, zombie pandemic, right? It's post-apocalyptic world, and he has to help this young girl get to a place where they're going to use her blood as a serum. And in traveling through the zombie world with this girl, he sort of rediscovers himself as a dad and as a man. And it's got its very pro masculinity. It's very pro fatherhood. It's very uh, deep kind of relationship for a video game. So people loved it. I got bored of the gameplay. For me, it was all just shooting zombies, and I get very tired of shooting zombies, and they're scary. And you know, it's like I just, I just, this was the same thing. So I, I got very close to the end. I now realize I was very close to finishing it, uh, and then I just got tired of the. the the shooting. Um, so The Last of Us 2 comes out, and right, this is a really popular game. And suddenly, so we're back in the uh, in the world, and the young girl, uh, Ellie, has grown up, and now she's a lesbian, because I, I don't know why, but suddenly she's a lesbian. And her friend, Joel, from the original, uh, this guy who's now older, he's an older guy, and he's clearly got very tender feelings, tender fatherly feelings towards this girl. And I should say, by the way, that the art and the voice acting in the game are terrific. The, they really are. It's a little slow. They take a little bit too much time with it. But still, it's really good voice acting, really good art. Joel is being hunted by Abby, who is a, for at least she looks like, a transgender woman, okay? So she looks like a guy who either has had an operation or something, or is a woman who thinks she's mad. I, you couldn't tell, you couldn't tell. And we have to play her at times, and she's just a vicious, vengeance-bent person in a game where every male, every male gets destroyed or humiliated. And, and Joel, this guy we've really learned to be with and to love and to kind of follow his role, uh, follow his journey into fatherhood, into rediscovering what it means to be a man. Now we've got to play her as she hunts, or him, or whoever, whatever she is, as she hunts him down. And we even get the joy of a graphic sex scene, which you just can't tell if it's a guy <laughs> sodomizing a guy who thinks he's a girl or what it is. You can't tell. Abby. Why are these all stuck together? Um. So an employee at IGN, one of the big game uh, websites, said anybody who doesn't like this scene is a virgin. Now, let me tell you something. I'm 65 years old. I had more sex last week than all the employees at IGN put together in the last year. OK, my one response to this is this. My eyes! My eyes! My eyes! My eyes! I don't care. I don't care what people are. I don't want to watch it. I don't want it forced down my my into my consciousness. I don't want them preaching to me while I'm trying to play a video game. And it's absurd. And by the way, a lot of people feel like this. You know, the critics give this game a 94%, which in, is no way. The people give it a 4.8 out of 100. <laughs> so that's, that's what the people think about this. This is awkward. We're supposed to be all so shocked and awesome. We don't care. We don't care. We're, most of us are straight people who just want to have kids and go on and have our family lives. We don't care what you're doing, but we don't need to know. We don't need to have this forced on us as telling us basically that we're immoral if we don't want to play this game. It's offensive. It is offensive to do that, right? It is offensive to push it on. Plus, it makes no sense. All the tolerance that we have for every little minor twist in human consciousness, all the tolerance we have, is because we are a powerful, rich, 
nation surrounded by an army that will protect us, we can afford to screw around with all the social justice we want. We think. We think that we can experiment with all the tolerance, all the social justice. Let everybody come in. Let everybody come into the country. There should be no borders. No, I'm such a good person. That is all because we are rich and powerful and protected by a massive, massive military force. Once there's a zombie pandemic, once you're living in a post-apocalyptic world, all those bets are off. Strong men rule. Men with guns rule over men without guns. Women will have to produce children. That's what they will be there for. There'll be a lot less tolerance of this sort of thing. Our tolerance is a luxury, and I'm all for it. I'm all for being tolerant. But don't tell me in a post-apocalyptic world surrounded by zombies, we're going to be the same decadent, non-caring, virtue signaling clowns we are in a situation where we are wealthy and protected and at peace. And just one more thing I got to say about this, because it's so offensive to me to be preached to about something I don't care about at all. I mean, I, I truly, I do not care what people are doing in their private lives, but it's offensive for them to tell me that a game that I really enjoyed or a game that most people really enjoyed because of its values now has to be twisted and sell their values to me instead of the values that I actually went to the game for in the first place. Why does everything have to be transformed into this garbage? That's what I want to know, especially illogically. And and one of the most offensive scenes in this, it is genuinely offensive that we have to play this vengeance-hungry Abby who's out to get the guy that we thought of as the hero. He was our character in the first game, this guy Joel. And then, I, I don't want to play a lot of this, I just want to play a little bit of this death scene, because they don't just kill him, they torture him to death. And the person who's doing it is a character that we are forced to play. Stupid old man. You don't get to rush this. You're done. You want what I want, right? End it. Now. Joel, get up. Joel, fucking get up. Please stop! Please don't shoot! Joel, please get up! No! They try to convince us that this transgender person is somebody we should somehow like and forgive. Uh, they make you kill a dog, uh, which a lot of people are really upset about. You know, it's garbage. It is garbage. I do not understand the disconnect that has taken place between entertainers, including sports people, movie people, uh, television people, entertainers, and the people they are supposed to entertain is an amazing phenomenon that we will call, in the, in the, in the later years, we will call, remember when they got woke and went broke because I don't think this game is going to do very well, and they can sit and rant and rage about it all they want. It doesn't matter. It's our values that we have, not their values. We don't need them to preach to us. They're game makers. Just make a good game and let us see our values in play, and then maybe, maybe we'll give you some of our money if you're very polite. That's what I have to say about The Last of Us. I hope we've seen The Last of Us.